Hi, thanks very much for clicking on the video link. My name is Natalie Armstrong Moton with Marketing Resolution, and this is another in the series of idle chat videos for the American Bar Association's Section 4 Dispute Resolution. And today I get to talk to fellow American all the way over on the other side of the Atlantic. This is John McCorvey. John, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you this morning? I'm doing very well. Thanks so much for being brave enough to sign up for an idle chat with me. Oh, my pleasure. It sounds fun. It is fun. It really, really is fun. So, John, the way this works is I've got about 100, I guess, 20, 25, 30 questions that I've written up on these cards. And we shuffle them up, or rather I shuffle them up. And the cards will dictate the topic of our conversation. You all right? Okay, it sounds a little mystical. <laughs> the suspense is killing us, right? That's right. All right. Don't be nervous. Let's see. The first card. John, what always cheers you up? A good laugh. Don't we need to laugh more? You know, lightheartedness, good times, laughing, whether it be with your friends, with your dog, with your family, whoever. Just uh, laughter. Laughter cheers me up. Amen. Choose yeah. happiness. Absolutely. Yep. Watch all those cat videos on YouTube before you go to sleep at night. You'll sleep much better. Well, you may find out I'm a dog guy. So uh, there's a lot of goofy dog videos, too. There's no shortage of goofball dogs out there, including my own. I've, I've got a dorpy redhead that lives in my house. I, I feel you. All right. Uh, John, what sound or noise do you really love? Oh, gosh. You know, I put on my earbuds almost every night, usually while I'm walking. But even if I don't walk, I just love to listen to music. And uh, I guess I'm like most people. I like to listen to the music that I remember from my era, so to speak. So I listen to a lot of uh, late 70s, 80s rock, because uh, that kind of gets you going when you're walking. Uh, everything from ACDC, The Who, The Rolling Stones, Joan Jett, just all those, those energetic uh, Led Zeppelin. Uh, but I cherry pick it. I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not, not a metal head per se. Um, each of those bands do have melodic tunes, believe it or not. It's not all just screaming into a microphone. And so, uh, you know, I like that. It just, uh, I find it very relaxing, Bob Seger. Just, it's a, it's, it just takes me away. It takes me away. Those lyrics take me to another time. Maybe when there was a little easier, a little less responsibility. And um, I just, uh, I just enjoy that in the evening. I agree. That's my kind of music, too. And I think it's because you're right. You hear it and you associate it with those happy days, those happy moments of being a, a young person. And you exactly. know all the lyrics and you remember when MTV came out and you remember the first <laughs> videos. And right. yeah, it, it is nostalgic and a little bit goofy, but I'm going to agree with you. I'm all on right. Team John with Very that good. one. John. Next question, do you have a green thumb? Not really. <laughs> I enjoy, I love to look at flowers. I think they're beautiful and I think all manner of plants are beautiful. And I like to spend time outdoors, typically on the water fishing, but um, I can also appreciate uh, parks and, uh, you know, the, the flowers and the fauna and, and all. And, uh, but uh, I don't really, I've never really spent time testing whether I have a green thumb. Um, I, uh, I made a weak attempt at um, illicit activity in my teens uh, with plants, and that didn't work out. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my only earnest effort to grow anything. Um, but uh, that doesn't mean I don't enjoy them. I, I'll take pictures of them and, and uh, you know, uh, love them in my backyard. In fact, our, our instruction to our landscaper was we want something that is easy, hard to kill, and something's always in bloom. 
and so that's kind of the backyard I have. And, and I love that. I love that. Uh, John, have you ever cut your own hair? No, not that I remember. I've had a few botched haircuts, and my mom didn't hesitate to tell me. She told me one time as a kid, uh, every now and then my dad would get a hold of me. My mom was a woman of fine taste and decorum, and my dad was not. <laughs> He was just out of the Navy, and uh, he took me to a candy shop. My mom had taken me to a salon because I had a lot of thick hair when I was a kid. Still have pretty thick hair. And, um, you know, she wanted it cut a certain way. She kind of dominated that aspect of my life at that age. And uh, Dad took me to a candy striper who buzz cut me. And uh, Mom told me I looked like, Charlie Brown. That was a blockhead that looked like Charlie Brown when I got home from that haircut. <laughs> <So we laughs> she didn't exactly get her glowing endorsements. <laughs> we avoided the candy stripers after that. Right. That's funny. I remember uh, the boys in my hometown, they were called summer cuts. And about this time of year, everybody went in and got the really short crew cut for the summertime so that you i think know, it's great i think it's great um obviously we we live in a time now where um you know anything goes as far as uh the hair i guess the 60s made that transition um and you know it's, i i think you see all kinds of the hair in the in in traditional workplaces i mean you'll see you'll yeah. see guys with man buns in law offices so it's um it's a different time you know the old guys though they were you know high and tight don't touch that don't let that hair touch those ears <laughs> or your collar well you're right your collar and i went to a private high school where there were hair police yeah, I, I, yes, I remember that. I remember that. All right, John, next card. Now, this one's divisive, so I will warn you in advance. Hit me. Does pineapple have any business being on a piece of pizza? Yes, and you know, you're right. That is very divisive, and it requires that it's done the right way. It's... It, it, you don't just throw it on a normal pepperoni pizza as an added ingredient. You have to have the right kind of cheese. You've got to have the right kind of complimentary toppings. And I would have said no to this question until a pizzeria near us that we frequent has a specialty slice with the pineapple on it and it's fantastic and i thought wow you know you learn something every day if it's done right that's the caveat if it's done right pineapple can be good on a pizza definitive answer i like it very much i'm a big fan of the pineapple on the pizza i like mine with jalapeno and ham I think ham is part of what was on the slice I ate. And uh, jalapeno sounds like a wonderful ingredient to add. Give it a little kick. A little something. That's right. A little hockey elbow to it. You know it. Right? All right, <laughs> John, I will ask you the same question that I ask all of my guests. And that is, tell us a little bit about your practice and what you love most about working in the resolution industry. Sure. Well, I've been a lawyer for 32 years, and um, I've been a mediator for, well, since 2007, 2008. Let's be conservative and say 2008. So, you know, what's that? 12, 14 years. And I kind of, so I, I kind of went into the mediation sort of near the middle of my litigation career where I, and that's the type of law I practice, litigation of many types, primarily business disputes, real estate litigation, but through the years I've handled personal injury on both sides, lots of different things. And I just realized that, uh, you know, the court system in the United States is the worst system in the world, except for all others. Kind of like 
Churchill said about democracy. Point is, uh, it has its imperfections, it has its ups, it has its downs, it's expensive, it's unpredictable. And I just thought, gosh, there's just got to be a better way than people go into court. And even when they win, if, if they're, if they're, unless there's an insurance company involved on the other side, uh, you know, you've got a piece of paper that says you won and maybe you spend an exorbitant amount of money for that and you can't collect on it. And so, or the person just goes and files bankruptcy, person or company. So I found that it was difficult to, uh, set realistic expectations with clients as much as you try people have watched too many tv shows they have a certain idea about what is going to happen in the uh, courtroom and everybody's idea of justice is they win they're fully vindicated it's it's cheap and to the extent the other side pays they get reimbursed well that's very rare that's one of 500 cases and so I matriculated toward mediation and, and, and did it out of my law practice for most of the past 14 years but joined an actual mediation firm last year out of Atlanta called Miles Mediation and Arbitration and we've got offices they opened a Jacksonville office and I was very pleased to be invited to be on the inaugural panel and uh, they have offices in, they're out of Atlanta, they have offices in Savannah, oh gosh, Nashville, Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, uh, now Tampa, in addition to Jacksonville and Florida. And uh, it's just more satisfying to be a peacemaker. You know, I can be a zealous advocate when I need to. I, I believe you can be, you, you can disagree without being disagreeable. Um, and I try to, I try to live by that on the law side of things, but the mediation side of things is much more interesting to me. It's much more, uh, satisfying to me. And it involves a completely different skill set. It involves, I'd say EQ is as maybe not more important than IQ in mediation you've got to be able to read people you've got to be able to empathize you've got to know that everybody's an individual with their they they bring a whole set of uh preconceived notions into a mediation um you've got to have the ability to not just look at the position of the party but to go behind the position and explore the real interesting concerns and by doing that you can generate more options on both sides to uh, help settle the dispute in a manner that uh, is, is as mutually satisfying as possible to the parties. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that everybody skips out of mediation happy because they've had to compromise to some extent. Um, but when they think about it, I think it beats the alternative uh, and a lot of times when those lawyers start asking for those trial retainers, um, principle fades <laughs> and, the, and, and the case is right for resolution by agreement. Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right. I think that the courts really are, are for, they view all of this situation as a case. And in mediation, we get to see the situation as the people the humans that's right and, and i think really even if it's a company the rep's a human and is gonna have certain feelings certain um you know uh preconceived notions certain uh certain bent let's say an insurance defense adjuster they're gonna think everybody's just out for a buck and they're gonna try to you know hold the purse strings tight some of them not all many are quite fair and, and, and offer reasonable uh, compensation given the extent of the injury. But, um, you know, others just come in there with a, every, every plaintiff's a greedy plaintiff mentality. And so you, you have to recognize which, which meat, which you've got, and you deal with each one differently. And so that's fun to me, you know, it's yeah. fun. Yeah, the and, human component. Um, at the end of the day, uh, it, there, it's very satisfying 
to reach an agreement that concludes a dispute and people can then move on with their lives. So you know, I tell people you go to right. trial, it's not over when the verdict comes in. There will be post-trial motions. Um, there will be, the, there's the possibility of an appeal. Uh, if you're seeking attorney's fees, you don't just magically get everything you've spent. You've got to bring in an expert to testify that it was reasonable. The judge may or may not agree. You may have spent 75000 Judge may only give you fifty. And so I, I try not to knock the system, but I just try to point out to people that it's probably not what they think it is. Uh, you in our in our area, you can have a different judge for trial uh, than the one that's presided over your entire case and has made all the rulings and knows the case. They work in pods of four, and who you get just depends upon who's the busiest and the least busiest. Crap shoot. Yeah. Man, oh man, oh man. Well, John McCorvey, thank you so much for joining me for an idle chat. It was a great pleasure to get to know you a little bit. Well, thank you, but I don't think it would be complete unless you met Fiona. My dog. Oh, sure. Let's, what you got? Yeah, baby. One second. Mm -hmm. This is my trusty sidekick, Fiona. And uh, look at the camera, baby. Fiona. Fiona, Fiona look at that, baby. And uh, two questions for you, Natalie. Uh, what breed is Fiona? And how old would you guess Fiona is? I'm going to say. You know, healthy size gal. I'm going to say Fiona is a Burmese mountain dog and that she is eight months old. Close. She, Fiona, is a Newfie, a Newfoundland, so you were in the right ballpark, is six, it's not quite six months old. Yeah, 60 big. pounds. So we'll probably have 520 pounds of dog on our hands when it's. Poor all said and done. Yeah, that that's me. You have a big one? No, that's that's a dog that is my size. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good luck walking it. Chris <laughs> 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 is very well trained, which none of them are. They're very stubborn dogs. Sweet, but stubborn. Right, yeah, we, we, we could be buddies. We could walk side by side, but I don't think I should be put in charge of anything that's my same size. <laughs> that's not it at all Very john good. thanks well, so much for your yeah, yeah. well thank you I... most of the day i appreciate that dogs always make the day better absolutely all right okay. thanks so much for joining me today john thank you natalie have a great day thanks take care bye-bye